Welcome to another new episode of the Declutter Me podcast with myself, Shalina. I hope you're well and having a lovely week. Um, this week, I decided to declutter all of my dining sets, bowls, cups, and get one new set. Um, I have loved this set for years, always wanted it, and when I finally was ready to buy it, it was sold out for like nearly a year. So it's finally coming to stock, and then they were 60% off, so I got it. So I feel like a proper grown-up with a proper, full, massive set, which I don't really need living by myself, but that's beside the point. I'm sure I will have parties again soon, well, two or three people in my house. Anyway, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing this week, and I feel very accomplished with myself. Um, what have you been doing? Have you done anything that's amazing as well? Let me know if you have. Um, I'm always excited to hear from my listeners and from my followers as well. Um, so anyway, so that's what I did. Um, last week, we talked about can you have it all? Um, I don't think you can, unless you're a gazillionaire, but you can get close to it. Um, so I gave some tips on that. Um, so we discussed your partner, your pets and food and today we're going to talk about kids, household staff and most importantly your social life. So let's start with the big one which is the kids. Kids can suck time from you whatever age they are and wear you out to the point that you can't even pee when you finally do get to the toilet. So yeah. I mean, I have two nephews. I love them dearly. One of them listens to the podcast sometimes. Um, but yeah, kids, um, I deal, not deal, that sounds awful. I work with kids, I uh, work with teenagers a lot. And this whole sweatshirt phenomenon, which I have discussed before, baffles me. And I was a teenager. I was a painful teenager. I was a goth teenager, moody yeah, I was I was a snappy, moody kind of girl. But teenagers now, wow, wow. The sweatshirts, why, why, why? Anyway, we're not going to discuss that again. So let's get back to the kids. So from toys to food to clothes, it's a lot. You have to deal with a lot with kids as well as just them as well. So let's break it down to how to get organized when dealing with some of their routines. Um, so for food, we discussed it in last week's episode. Um, you can follow meal plans from Yummy Mummies, you know, get 10 to 14 recipes, rotate them every few weeks. Um, and if you have someone who can cook the food, that's even better for you because that saves you having to do it. Um, or get a machine like a Thermomix. I've heard very good things about them from lots of mummies and other people saying, you know, that it's amazing. It helps reduce the amount of time for cooking. Um, I mean, when we were growing up, my mum used to have to make certain curries and it would be every week, these different types of curries. Sometimes you'd play it up, but you know, it's, it's what we grew up with, it was lovely, it filled us up, you know, have things like that that can fill you up and also that can have leftovers so you don't have to cook every day as well. Um, but, you know, if you can get a cook, if you can get a maid or someone to do the cooking or to at least help with the prep, that will help you a lot, especially if you've got a full-time job um, and if you have to make lots of food because the kids are fussy. So um, that's the main thing to do with food. Um, with toys, um, I have discussed it before in episodes, um, and I'll put them in the show notes. Um, but all, you know, my, my mantra is buy one, get rid of two. So if you buy one toy, you need to get rid of two. Um, and so you can explain it to the kids that they're going to the, to people who are not, to kids that are not as fortunate as them, or they don't play with the toys or the toys are broken, you know, get rid of the toys that are broken, get them out of there. Um, if they don't play with the toys, remove them as well. Um, and, you know, declutter the toys every so often that are too old for them. Um, so you can donate them, sell them. So they're out of sight as soon as possible for yourself. Um, and also buy less toys. You know, let, let's be honest, like they don't need that many toys. It's overwhelming for them. It overstimulates their mind. It's overwhelming for you. It's overwhelming for the maid if she has to deal with it as well. It's overwhelming for everybody. Um, even if you have kids who are different ages, they still don't need to have 100 toys each. Uh, let's be honest about that. So, you know, and I go to houses. Sorry, I'm about to sneeze. <sighs> 
So I go to houses and the rooms are exploding with toys. Um, they don't need 20 types of toys, um, of uh, dolls, and four massive boxes of Lego. Okay, Lego is amazing, but you don't need so many massive boxes of Lego. Um, so reduce the intake so that they can enjoy, enjoy what they have and play with them fully. So think about that, you know, with the toys. Um, and as I said, I'll put it in the show note about, again, about how to, um, you know, declutter the toys and organize the toys as well. Um, we talked about the nanny. Let's talk about it her more. You know, if you can afford to get help and find a good, decent nanny, because that is the difficult part, um, then have one to help you with the kids. You know, a good one will help with the feeding, the bathing, the playing, and even changing their nappy. So if you have a full-time job and household to manage, the nanny can be your lifesaver. So think about that if you can, you know. Um, if you can't afford one, see if you can get help from relatives or friends. A few hours of time with someone else so you can focus on you, on the house, on your chores. You know, think of a way, or if you can go put them in like, you know, um, a nursery, play school, somewhere where they can go so that you can deal with the house. Um, that will help you a lot. Um, household chores. Let's talk about that with the kids. You know, as the kids get older, get them started to start assisting with household chores. You know, create a weekly rotor to give tasks to the kids and your partner as well to assist in the house. It means they get to learn how to clean the house, how to cook, how to look after a house because they'll need to learn, you know, when they go to uni or they live on their own, they'll have to look after the house themselves. They won't have mummy or the maids or whoever to do the things for them. So teach them now how to learn, you know, how to do all these things. We learned how to do them. We were tasked with things, you know, we were, um, I was always a person who had to set the table. My brother had to, oh no, my brother set the table. I would clear the table. We would help with cleaning the house, vacuuming, vacuuming, doing the washing machine, you know, putting the clothes out. You know, we all, we had to do certain chores because we didn't have a cleaner. And my dad was like, you know, you need to learn. So we learned. So give them these they need to learn now and give them the tricks and the the skills to to survive when they live on their own. Um, and you can get great brochures online that you can take and use and um, develop for your fa your family and your household as well. Talking of household, let's talk about household staff. So um, a lot of people here are fortunate to be able to have household staff. So, you know, if you are able to get maids, drivers, nannies, cook, try and get them, you know. It, having great staff means that they get to deal with a lot of the chores and frees up time for you to deal with the things that you need to do. Um, but if they're zapping the energy away from you, complaining, demanding for loans, demanding for more money, doing a bad job, then hire new staff. You know, if you, if you were working... In a corporate office and you were bad at your job you would be removed you have to think about the same thing for the staff in your in your house and dealing with your house because you're running a company in the at the end of the day in your in your house okay so um, I have an agency made that comes every week to clean my house and iron my clothes um, I could do it myself but then that take away three or four hours of my time which I need to do other things like record a podcast so she comes in does it she's amazing and I love her and I've had her for a long time um, and so it she just frees up a lot of my time I get to do work or you know go out and organize people's houses while she's cleaning my house um, I can't get a full-time maid I don't have space for them but and I don't need one you know I just need somebody to come every week and so that's great and then in the rest of the week I clean myself I have a robot vacuum as well so I just switch that on and that vacuums the house so that's a lifesaver as well like if you can't get um, household staff if you have machines like a RoboVac get one of them they're amazing like you just press it on and he just starts cleaning the house of course you have to pick up things like rugs cat toys things off the floor but that's it and then it just gets on with it and does it so um yeah do that you know get to think of things that can help you to reduce your time doing things like household chores because yeah it's painful um so yeah so that's the household stuff um let's finally talk about your social life so you know we've talked about your home 
and the people within your home. But how about your time? How about your friends? You know, um, I love going to the cinema, and I've talked about this before. I love going to the cinema by myself when I'm not working to watch a movie in peace. My phone is off. I'm not moving around and fidgeting. I'm not uh, interrupted by my cats. I'm not interrupted by anyone. I'm just sitting in a seat quietly watching a movie and it is my form of meditation i know it's weird especially when it's an action movie but it, it's it, I, I i am just in peace and i'm very happy um you may have your own form of meditation or even meditate um people recommend that you should do this and like you know but i i just never switch off so um i have seen a recommendation that you if you're in your car say you're waiting for the kids to come from school and you're waiting in the car you just close your eyes for 10 15 minutes and just meditate you know you can put one of those apps on or find something on youtube or apple music or something and just meditate um so you could do that you know um if you can if you can sit still for 10 15 minutes that's awesome so let, I just, I'm, I'm not going to recommend that for myself. I just go watch a movie. Um, if you're into sports, book a time to do your sports and have your partner, nanny, relative, look after the kids and look after the house. Um, you know, find time for yourself so that you can do sports that you love. Um, and then with, with regards to your social life, it is difficult to carve out time to see your friends, especially when everyone is so busy. Um, my close friends and I make sure that we meet every month at least and chat on WhatsApp every few days. I am the terrible person at starting conversations and they know that and they'll most probably be shaking their head agreeing. Um, but they know that as soon as they message me, as soon as I'm free, I will respond to them. Um, and if it wasn't for their understanding, I wouldn't have any friends. That's let, let's be honest. Um, so my friends here in the UK, around the world, they, they will contact me and go, you know what? What's up, Shalina? You know, you're all right. And I'll be like, yeah, amazing. This is happening, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, that's the beauty of having a close knit group of friends. Um, and then, you know, as I said, we, we try and meet up every month. So we will book time. Um, and if we can, we'll get the group of friends all together. So it's easier for us to see each other all at the same time. Um, I have one friend who's my massage buddy. So we go for a massage somewhere and then we'll go for dinner. So we get to relax, get to eat and get to catch up and chat. And it's something that we both look forward to. And, you know, sometimes we can't make it every month, but we try so hard because it is something we, we're combining, every, you know, all these things that we love. We love each other as friends. We love massages and we love eating. So perfect. So if you could do something like that, combining things that you want to do or tasks that you want to do with your friends, great uh you know you could go shopping with a friend if you if there's a friend who likes shopping and doing the same kind of things do that with them even though obviously buy one get rid of two you know what i mean um so yeah so these are my six areas to concentrate on to get some time back in your life let me know if they work for you and if you start feeling like you can have it all um and yeah i hope you found it useful today uh, listening to this episode if you did, please can you spread this episode to your friends, family, near or far, and leave a review to help the podcast get seen by others. The more reviews that's out there, the better it is for us. So please, if you ha are listening on one of the um, uh, podcast um, apps, like Apple Podcasts, Amazon, uh, Spotify, um, please leave a review that'd be lovely um and if you would like more tips and advice please follow us on social media i'd love it if you follow me on instagram at d-e-c-l-u-t-t-r-m-e and uh yeah thank you so much for listening i hope you found it useful and i'll speak to you next week take care bye